Hi everyone, this is Tyler White, um, co-founder of Gestalt Performance and the World Pigeon Congress. If you are interested in working with pitchers in any capacity whatsoever, or just working with the baseball athlete, the World Pitching Congress is your event. We're bringing in the, the top people in the country, uh, speaking on what makes them the best in the world at what they do. Um, here's a little snippet of a few things biomechanically we like to look at that, that helps us get a better picture of how the body moves and how we can, we can get people better, um, and uh, 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 what you could also learn at this event. Okay, so a couple things we like to look at biomechanics-wise. Uh, and this is something that's really important as the clinician to think about because if you get them strong and stable and moving better, but they go back to doing the exact same stuff they were doing before they got them hurt, odds are they're probably going to be back in your care. Now, even though that does keep you in practice, it's not the approach we want to take. So one thing you want to uh, be able to ha do is have a good relationship with the pitching coach or to also be able to uh, break down some pitching biomechanics or some pitching mechanics through video to let them know certain things that are stressing them out or stressing out their arms. So a couple things that we typically see that are the most stressful or common patterns with uh, elbow pain or elbow injury uh, is uh, one is we see the pitcher has a late arm leading into front foot strike and I'll break that down here in a second. Two, early pronation, or not really pronation, that's three. Uh, early trunk rotation, so rotating their trunk too soon, which activates the chain a little bit too fast, which then stress goes to the arm. And then three, like I said a second ago, early pronation. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go over uh, the late arm first. So Jack, what I'm having you do is you're going to do a quick little wind up, and let's let's have you turn face this way. So you're going to do just a simple raise your leg and then bring your arm out like that for me real quick. Good. And then go ahead and, and uh, land on your front foot. So a late arm, we're looking, we ideally want to see the arm at about 90-ish degrees of uh, shoulder flexion and uh, abduction. What we typically see, also uh, external rotation, what we typically see with a late arm is they will have their arm lower at about, mm, say, 0 to 30-ish, 45-ish degrees of external rotation, leading into the activation of the whole sling going forward. So what happens is, when this arm is here, when ideally it should be here in a loaded position at the end of its active uh, range of motion, before you get into the passive layback, it, it creates like a whip-like mechanism that puts a ton of stress at the shoulder, but then also transfers to the elbow, because this has to speed up to catch up to where the rest of the body's going. Okay, so that's one, that's, that's a huge one. We see that so commonly um, in uh, baseball elbow injuries. Two is going to be early trunk rotation. So set back up in your normal position. Do, do exactly what we just did a second ago. And you're going to go ahead and all the way to foot land. Good. So what we see with early trunk rotation is before this arm gets up into a good position here, or before the front, sorry, before the front foot lands into the good throwing phase, he's already tugging that front side forward in like this. So go ahead. Let's, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to turn face and switch so the camera sees a little easier. Okay, same deal. Now I want you to go ahead and wind up and then land your front foot, good. So as his front foot's going to land, before that weight has been transferred from the ground, because as soon as your front foot hits, that body weight sends force back and that catapults or trebuchets your, your upper body to throw the baseball. So what happens is if he's pulling here before that creates a base of support, his body has to create stress to keep up with what's not being pulled from the ground. So this is an inefficient movement because you're not using your lower half where most of your power comes from anyway. So we're creating a pull and a stress. Now the problem is, when you have this, if you're not up in a good position here before that front foot strikes, you're basically doubling your stress if you have a late arm in early trunk rotation. So the third one, we're gonna turn face this way this time. Same deal. Third one, this one is kinda of hot right now in research. This is a highly debated um, uh, mechanical flaw amongst pitching coaches, amongst clinicians, amongst researchers. So. Earlier, early on, it was said this was not a big deal. We approached it as if it was, because I saw this very commonly in, in the patients that we saw that were in with elbow injuries. And then once we fixed that, the, the problem started going away. So we, we clearly saw there was, a, there was a pattern here. Research is starting to show, yes, this was the case. So go ahead and go into the normal wind-up position and then land on your front foot. Good, okay. So early pronation, what we see of pronation of the arm. As he's going into front foot strike, we see a lot of uh, throwers 
pronating their, their hand too soon, creating stress at the medial elbow. Right? So say you're pointing the ball towards center field or second base. We ideally want to see as they land that front foot, because that's when all the stress happens. That's when all the stress is and forces transferred. That's when the whole kinetic sequence, think of it like a big tornado, the whole kinetic sequence goes and activates. That we want that to be in that position. And you can palpate the medial elbow and feel that flexor pronator mass relax and then fully contract and get aggravated. So the more you do this, the more it strains and puts stress at the uh, medial elbow. So that's one thing, or the, the last thing you really wanna check. Now, the, the, the thing is, these are just three common things we see with elbow issues. A lot of times, you can go and relax. A lot of times, this comes from a lack of good hip stability and mobility, a lack of good spine stability, good intra-abdominal pressure and breathing, and shoulder stability. Like, all, really, your throwing comes from here. Not much in the arm. The arm is just kind of a byproduct of this. So if you take really good care of the shoulder, teach them how to breathe really well and make sure the hips are moving, you take out a lot of co uh, compensatory movements that makes them a more efficient mover. All right, so there it is. Uh, again, World Pitching Congress, January 17th through the 19th, 2020. Uh, and that's actually in Lake St. Louis, here in, uh, just outside of St. Louis, 25, 30 minutes outside of St. Louis. Um, it's in a big facility where we're going to have tons of room for uh, weight training demos. We have some of the top people from the Dodgers and the Braves and, and other organizations. Um, and then we also have pitching mounts for throwing and we have a full area for uh, uh, you know, big screen and lectures. So uh, it's going to be quite an event. Uh, this is the first year of us doing it. We're hoping this is an annual thing. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out. You can check us out uh, at the website at uh, www.gestaltperformance.com. Um, yeah, so hope to see you there.